What's up? By this point, I'm sure you've seen all of the amazing things going on with AI. You've played with ChatGPT, and maybe you've even messed around with some image generation tools. For me, I found the AI image generation experience to be a bit clunky, and I wanted to fix that. So I built this Slack interface for myself. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Zapier to quickly and easily build a personal OpenAI Dolly playground in Slack to generate AI images just like this for you on the fly. Ready? Let's get into it. So like I mentioned, I'm sure you've used ChatGPT. It's a relatively simple tool. You've got this nice interface here where you can ask it any question you want and it's gonna come back with a response. If you're a little bit more advanced, you might've also used this OpenAI Playground, which was around before ChatGPT, and it's where a lot of people started interacting with tools like GPT-3. And this is still good if you're gonna be a heavier user of these tools and want to build API integrations yourself. You can select different models in here. You can change some of the parameters for the models. We're not gonna get into this too much because that's not what this one's about, but you know, you can ask questions in this playground. But one problem is that this playground is only for the text models for OpenAI. So it has these GPT text models and it has these code completion models also, but there's no image generation stuff that you can actually do in the playground yourself. If you wanna do image generation, you need to basically write calls to the OpenAI Dolly API to be able to access the results. And there are some third party tools that you can use online to do this also, but I always like to kind of work directly with the APIs that I'm gonna be interacting with and not rely on third party tools. So I wanted a quick way that I could just easily interact with the Dolly API without really having to build kind of a custom Python script or something like that. And so I decided that a good interface for that was going to be Slack. So I have this simple Slack here. This is a personal Slack for me. You can do this on a free Slack plan. It's you know relatively simple to sign up. And this is a Slack that I use for kind of various work projects and things like that. But I'm the only one in here, it's just personal to me. And this is what I would recommend you do. And you can just create a new channel. So what I've done here is created one called AI Image Bot. And so go ahead, sign up for Slack, You know, create whatever channels you wanna do. And then we're gonna actually get into building our automation here using Zapier. If we come into Zapier, you're gonna to wanna to create a new Zap and start with the trigger here. Let me just delete this or yeah, I'll just back out here. Okay, so we're gonna create a new Zap and in trigger, we're gonna search for Slack. And what we're gonna want is anytime that you send a message, and it could be you or other people. I mean, for me, it's, it's just me personally, but you do this for, at the channel level. And so you can set it up so that anytime anybody sends a message in that Slack channel, it's gonna generate the image. So come into Slack and what I wanna do is select this new message posted to channel. So anytime a new message is posted to the channel we select, this will trigger and we'll be able to send the information over to OpenAI. So this is the Slack I have set up. If you don't already have Slack connected to Zapier, it'll prompt you here where you can connect your Slack account. I'll continue. And for channel, I'm gonna select that AI image bot channel that you saw just a second ago. For trigger for bot messages, I'm gonna leave this false because this is a bot itself and I don't wanna create any loops. If you have specific use cases, you know, you could do this differently. And if you haven't yet sent a message in that channel, go to the channel, send a message to test your trigger. I've already sent them. So when I click test my trigger here, it's going to pull up a number of messages that have been sent. This is one that I just sent before. And we can use this as we are going about our, our development here. And so you're gonna to want to have that set up when you start. So now what we wanna do is send that prompt where I said, you know, an elephant walking down Fifth Avenue in New York City in a photorealistic style. We wanna send that over to OpenAI. 
So again, you're going to want to go to OpenAI. You're going to want to sign up for an account if you don't have one already. And you're going to need to get an API key because that's how we're going to tell OpenAI which account we want to use for this. So come over to this page. You go to you know this drop down on the right, view API keys, and you'll click this create new secret key button. I'm not gonna do that because I already have mine set up, but create new secret key, and then you'll copy and paste that key. You'll wanna keep that secure and not share that with other people. Then when you come back over into Zapier and you are going to want to choose this generate image. So we're gonna generate an image with Dolly given a prompt continue and you're going to want to connect your OpenAI account if you haven't already so I've already connected mine but similar to before if you haven't it's going to prompt you to connect and then you can input that API key that you just copied and that will connect over to OpenAI for you so now we need to map our data so the message that we got in our slack channel we're going to want to take the text that becomes the prompt so the text that you type in there is the prompt for what you want to send for OpenAI's Dolly model to actually create for you. You can, you can create more than one, and this would be a good possibility for a future thing to expand. You could have multiple images coming up, but for now, I'm just gonna leave this at one. And then you can select different sizes. So depending on the size, this is the number of pixels that's gonna be created in your image. And creating larger images is a little bit more expensive for you on your API than creating smaller ones, but obviously they're higher resolution, so there's a trade-off there. I'm just selecting 512 by 512. That's a good kind of medium value, but if you wanted to create like production-ready images, you might want to go to the larger 1024 size. And now we can test this action also. So it's going to send this prompt and we're gonna receive an image back in this size from OpenAI. Okay, so what it sends over is a URL and our image is gonna be stored at this URL. So if we check this, this is, you'll see it's similar, not exactly the same, but relatively similar to what we had created before. And this is the image that we ultimately want to send back to Slack, but currently we just have it as this URL here so we need to now create a third step in our process where we're again going to be using Slack. Our event here is going to be send channel message. We're just going to want to send a message in that same channel where we were prompted before. Again, select your Slack account and then select the channel that you want it to go to. That should most likely be the same channel that you were operating on before. And you have to put in some message text here. So for me, I just write, here's your image, but you have to put something into this field. You can put whatever you'd like. Send as a bot is yes. You can name your bot. So by default, it's gonna be Zapier, but you can call this, you know, Dolly image bot or anything you want. You can come up with a fun name. You can also create an icon, supply an icon for your bot. So like usually what I do is just these robot face icons, but you, yeah, so for example, robot face, but you can really just put like any emoji in this field and that'll become the icon for your bot. So it's just a little fun thing that you can do there. Include a link to this app. So this is really for like debugging. So if you want to kind of go back and forth for a while, you can keep this on. And when it sends, it's going to actually include a link to this app itself. So you can click in and make any changes. For me, I don't really need that because I don't anticipate making too many changes after this. So I'm just going to select no. And then this attach image by URL. So you could just put the link to the URL up here and then you know you have somebody click into it. And I think actually Slack might auto expand that image anyway, but for simplicity, we're just going to do this here. And what Slack's going to do is basically download the image from this URL and then attach it to the message itself so that the image will just show up in line like this and you won't have to click a link or even have the link show up to where that image is stored. And 
all these other details. I don't think we need to change anything. You can, so one thing that I was experimenting with before is this thread option and you can set it up so that it creates this as a direct reply to the thread itself. I don't like that because then it gets hidden, but if you wanted to do this, it keeps your Slack channel a little bit more clean. And what you'll wanna do is take the timestamp of the original message and put that in here. And so you can find that in this drop down here and here it's this TS value. So if we add this, then the message rather than coming through here at the top level, it would be nested underneath the initial question that was sent in. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna click continue and then let's test this action. Okay, and looks like that message just came through as well. So this appears to be working. So now we've kind of built the entire process. I'm gonna click publish zap and turn it on. Okay, it's on. And so now if I come back into this channel, I've just disabled the other one that I was working on as a test. And so let's come up with a new prompt. Let's say a, I don't know, a Jaguar is walking through Tokyo with sunglasses on. And let's see what they come up with for us. This is pretty quick also. This whole process, it takes, you know, maybe like 15 seconds for it to generate. And all right, so Tokyo, they, they took some pretty liberal interpretation of Tokyo, but it is a Jaguar with uh, sunglasses on. And so this is where also the, what I had mentioned previously, how you can generate more than one value. That's where this can come in handy because oftentimes, the you know one image that gets generated isn't going to be great but if you look at like five different images you can find one of them that's pretty good and so that would be a good kind of expansion for this to have multiple of these get sent back but yeah that's that's basically the whole process here so now we have this slack bot and anytime i want i can come in here and just play around you know really just write whatever i want so so let's try this again but i find that in a photo realistic style often generates some pretty cool results that look a little bit more real and yeah you know like this is just this allows you to have that kind of playground type feel where you have this back and forth chat bot and so this is this is kind of cool he, i don't I think he lost his sunglasses but again you might want to generate multiple options let's try in a futuristic cyber punk style and see what they come up with here. And yeah, you know, so similar to like chat GPT, now you can just have this ongoing dialogue and just do new things. So this, this looks pretty cool. You know, it, it looks like a little bit boxy and computer generated obviously, but, but yeah, you know, generate multiple results, see what you can do. So this was the Dolly image bot from OpenAI. I'm gonna create future videos where I do this using Stable Diffusion as well. Some of those results I think can be a little bit better, but this is a good place to start and shows you how you can really make use of the OpenAI API and Zapier to stitch these things together. You know, this video, we just did this in less than 15 minutes, didn't have to do any coding. And now you have a really cool bot that you can play around with. So hope you find this useful and yeah, send me anything cool that you end up making as a result of this. Thanks.